Well, pause those treadmills and slow down your exercise bikes. The myth that you have to reach your maximum target heart rate in order to burn fat is about to be debunked. Joe's here with the evidence. Well, Shirley, Dr. McKeever, it turns out that uh, while, in fact, the most the maximum cardiovascular benefit may occur at your uh, target heart rate, which okay. let's define what that is. Okay. They take 225 minus your age and 80% of that. So you're, say, 40 or 5, right? Well, okay. I know my target heart okay. rate, but I'm not going to let y'all back into how, old, how we got that. So, <laughs> so you take your age, say, if you're 60 years old, you know, uh, you take... Uh, 225 minus your age leaves you at 165. 80% of that would be roughly 133. That's your target heart rate. Um, and maximum cardiovascular benefits said to occur at that target heart rate. Okay. However, maximum fat burning occurs at a lower rate, but a, lo a more extended period of time. Now, you Usually know, that's really interesting yeah. because I would have thought you had to have a faster heart rate to burn fat. Well, there's this whole aerobic and anaerobic thing, which we don't have, we'll, when we do our exercise program, we'll get into that, but there's a point where you're actually anaerobic instead of aerobic, and at that point mm -hmm. in time, you're, you're, you're consuming more oxygen than you're putting, or you're taking, your oxygen level is backwards. Oh, okay. And at that point in time, your heart's just working hard to keep up, right. and you're, you might be burning calories, but you're not burning fat. So and is that unhealthy? That would be unhealthy no, to get it still, too No, it's still still good for no? your heart. Okay. It's just, you know, we're talking about burning fat, you know, because okay. fat is a reserve source of energy. Calories are an immediate source of energy, fat's a reserve source of energy. So uh, fat burning actually occurs at 60 or 65 percent of your, uh, tar or your uh, target heart rate, um, but for longer periods of time. But the main thing we want people to get out of this debunking the myth is, it, whatever the case may be, if working out at 50 percent of your target heart rate mm -hmm. is going to make it comfortable for you to continue working out, then for you, 50 percent is better. Do it, yeah, because exactly. Because what happens is some people, they go become a weekend warrior, uh, they embark on an exercise program. You probably see this in rehab and recovery all the time, doctor. And they, they be, you know, they go all out, and six months later, they're completely burnt out. Then they're not yeah, doing they're anything. Yeah, they're not going to do it. Really want to well, see people adopt something they can live with. Well, you know, when I used to do the treadmill, and I, I go to a gym now, but when I used to do the treadmill, I noticed that if I would just, if I could just hang on for 40 minutes, I would, uh, my fat you know, that I burned would really go up. Right. I mean, it was a big difference in 40 minutes and 30 as far as my fat burning. So. And yet, people say, well, I, I don't have that much time. So yeah. if, you, if 30 is what you can do, 30 is better than going to zero. In For other sure. words, because you can't go 40, don't say mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. That's, that's what we really want to mm -hmm. emphasize. But, and also, you know, getting to your target heart rate, and Dr. McKeever, I'd like you to comment on this. Um, people will start out with a workout regime, and in the first week they're getting to their target heart rate. It's probably not advisable, is it? I was just going to say, I'd be remiss in, if I didn't say that, uh, that before starting an exercise program, you, you really need to be evaluated to make sure that it's safe <clears throat> by your doctor, to make sure that it's safe for you to be exercising. Um, hmm. And if you, if you come to a cardiologist, they're likely to do a, a, a stress test uh, on you just to make sure that, that when you exercise under conditions where we have everything monitored, we know that it's safe for you to exercise. Uh, Talk about stress tests for a minute. We, we all know that a stress test, you get up there, you, you hook up a bunch of stuff, you run on a treadmill and they look at th the things that your heart are doing. Specifically, what are you looking at? You, are you monitoring blood pressure? Are you monitoring heart rate? What are you looking at? All of the above. We're, we're, we're monitoring the physiologic response to exercise, which is the heart rate response and the blood pressure response to exercise. And at the same time, we're looking at the electrocardiogram. Uh, because the electrocardiogram changes in a very characteristic way when the heart uh, gets in trouble and gets what we call ischemic, mm -hmm. where the heart, you were talking about anaerobic and aerobic, uh, the heart gets, if the heart has blocked coronary arteries and you outstrip the blood supply of the heart, mm -hmm. the heart begins to uh, function in an anaerobic state and there are <coughs> uh, specific EKG changes mm, okay. that occur that we can identify the patient getting into trouble before the patient feels like he's in trouble. Mm. Well, you know, a, a quick question here about working out. You know, they have a chart on the wall where I work out, which is a woman's gym, and they say don't exceed your, this heart rate. And um, and if, if I let myself, if I really worked hard, it could exceed it. But I think I have a kind of a rapid resting heart rate. So is that putting me in danger of a heart attack if I if I my heart rate goes higher? Well. Probably not, but it, again, uh, you, you'd want to do that in a controlled environment first. Okay. So you, you'd do a maximum stress test. So we would put you on the treadmill and make you uh, run until you can't run any further. Mm -hmm. okay. that, so then you know what your limits are. Hmm. Okay.
Okay. Uh, if you have any, you may not have any limits. Let's talk about blood pressure within the stress test. I think one of the things a lot of uh, people are confused about is they look at, they maybe have high blood pressure, and then one of the immediate recommendations is exercise. People think, well, wait a minute. If I exercise, isn't that going to increase my blood pressure? Now, correct us if it's wrong, but in a, in a well-trained athlete, don't you see the systolic, which is the top number of the uh, of blood pressure for our viewers, don't you see that go up but then level back off after they're exercising for a while? Yes. Uh, the, the normal blood pressure response to exercise is that it will go up. The more in shape you are, mm. the, the less it will go up and the less your heart rate will go up. Th that's and, and the sooner it will recover when you stop exercising. Mm. So as you continue to exercise and become more aerobically fit, it will be harder and harder for you to, to reach your target heart rate. I, I notice that. I have to work harder now. And if I go on, on vacation, two-week trip or something, and I'm not exercising, it goes up much quicker. Yeah. So that's not a good thing. Well, up next, are there preventative tests out there to ward off heart disease? Dr. Lewis McKeever, the cardiologist chairman from Midwest Heart Specialists, who we've certainly been enjoying having on, will give us some tips on keeping your heart healthy. So stay with us.